So unless you're new here, you probably know I'm a pretty big fan of diet breaks. I recommend them a lot. They can be really helpful. If you're not sure what a diet break is, for simplicity, it's basically a period of time, usually around a week or two, when you're in a dieting phase where you bring your calories up to around maintenance, sometimes bring your cardio down a little bit, and just give your body a break. By doing this, there is the potential for better long-term results because there could be things like improvements in hormones and metabolism. You may be less hungry, have better energy. Just breaking up the monotony of the dieting can be useful possibly retaining more lean body mass, a lot of potential benefits. However, there's not a lot of research on this subject. I did do a video about a year ago covering the two main studies we have that look more specifically at this approach, one showing a pretty big benefit for things like your metabolism, the other one not showing any benefit. Well, now there's a brand new study that just came out of USF that looks at diet breaks, so we have a third study to look at. So before getting to that, let's do a recap on the other two studies we have so we can put them all together. So the first study was the Matador study where they took obese people, put them in either a 16 week continuous dieting phase where they spent the entire 16 weeks in an energy deficit. And then they had another group that split it up with two week diet breaks with two week diets. So the total time was 30 weeks, but the total amount of time spent in the diet was 16 weeks for each group. In this study, the diet break group saw 47% better fat loss, less reductions in their resting metabolic rate, better muscle retention, and in my opinion, even more valuable than any of that, was there was less weight regain post diet for the diet break group. Now the other study I covered looked at 12 weeks of continuous dieting versus three weeks of dieting with one week of diet break done over four intervals of this. And this was not done in the obese population. This was done more in athletes. This one showed much different results with no significant difference in resting metabolic rate, muscle retention, or fat loss as a whole. However, the diet break group did report significantly less hunger and there was a lower dropout rate for the people in the diet break group versus the continuous group. So that leads me to the new study we have, which was similar to the one I just covered in that it was a shorter duration. And this one was even shorter than that one. It was six weeks of continuous dieting versus two weeks of dieting and one week of diet break done three different times. Much like the previous study, this was not done in obese individuals, this was done in athletes and people who have been routinely strength training. And what did this one show? Pretty much confirmed what the last one showed. No differences in resting metabolic rates, no differences in fat loss, no differences in muscle retention. But again, there was a significant advantage in the diet break group with reported hunger. So it'd be pretty easy to look at this and say, okay, we've got three studies now, Two of the three showed no differences in metabolic rates, so there's probably not much of a benefit to them, but there's some things you need to consider here. You hear me talk all the time about the importance of sustainability, about how almost everyone who loses weight ends up gaining it back. And let's be honest, one of the big reasons people struggle to follow through with their plan is the inability to deal with hunger. And every single one of these studies showed significant improvements in hunger levels in the diet break groups. So while you can potentially see the same results and get them faster in the short term by continuing to diet. If you keep going off plan because of hunger and you keep undoing all your hard work, well, what good does that do? So adherence is always number one, and it's not just for short windows of time. Keep in mind too, it's not just about hunger. One thing I see all the time from people who come back from diet breaks is reporting much better energy, their mood is better, they just feel better, feel more motivated. And it's like, if nothing else, it's breaking up the monotony of the dieting. So you don't just feel like you're just being run into the ground all the time. So even if there is no metabolic benefit, which we don't really know for sure, there's plenty of other benefits. And who cares if you get results faster, if you're miserable and you can't keep the weight off after. We also have to look at this and go, okay, what are some potential reasons for the differences in these studies? Well, one, maybe there's something that's different between obese individuals versus athletes. The group that saw the biggest benefit was an obese. The two that didn't show any benefit were in athletes. Maybe there's something about the length of time of a diet break. The group that showed the benefit had two week breaks. The studies that showed no benefits only had one week. So perhaps it takes longer for the effects of the diet break to kick in to help metabolically. Maybe it has something to do with total time. The Matador study was 16 total weeks. And again, a lot of breaks in between. The other groups were shorter than this. Perhaps the longer you go out, the more benefit there is. We don't really know. These are just all possibilities. But I will give you my experience anecdotally. Of course, you always have to be careful with anecdote, but this is what I've seen most commonly. And keep in mind, I don't work with very many athletes. The majority of people I work with are more lifestyle types of clients who are looking to lose weight. And I have just seen repeatedly 
people seem to respond so much better coming back from a two week break versus just a one week break. I see it time and time again. So maybe there really is something about two weeks. I don't know. We'll continue to look at things. We'll continue to hopefully get more research on the matter. But at the end of the day, you can probably succeed with either method. There's no magic solutions here. You just have to determine if one strategy is a better strategy for you or not. If you're someone who's always tried to white knuckle a diet and just keep going until you finally just blow up and you can't keep doing it anymore and you undo all your progress while continuing to go down that pattern is probably not a great approach and you might do better by incorporating more frequent diet breaks. If you're someone who's taken more breaks consistently, but now it feels like the diet's dragging on forever and it starts getting you down and you have a hard time continuing to go because it feels like it's gonna take forever, well, maybe less frequent breaks is a better approach for you. That's the big thing you have to understand. There's no right or wrong answers. And that's kind of the beauty of all the stuff that we do here. Everyone thinks that there's just this one way to do everything, but the truth is there's hundreds, if not thousands of ways to do it. So you need to find ways that are the least restrictive for you, the things that you're able to continue to do in the long run and whatever will help you adhere better in the big picture is going to be the best approach for you. But also keep an open mind, never be tied to one approach. Listen, right now, I think diet breaks are great. And I think they probably do have some metabolic advantages when they're taken in a longer time frame, but we don't really know. Maybe in the future, we get a lot more research and they try to repeat the Matador study and other studies like that. And it repeatedly shows no metabolic advantage. I will say there is probably no metabolic advantage, but again, that doesn't mean there aren't other benefits still just always have an open mind and don't get tied to an opinion and one approach. Anyway, with that out of the way, if you don't know a lot about diet breaks or how to set them up for yourself, then I have a video you can check out up top next that talks about how to go through them, how to adjust your calories, how to adjust your cardio, when to take them and all that. So check that out next. Otherwise, I think you'll like this bottom video instead, and I'll see you in the next video.